Back at you again. Coming back with another banger. Thank you all for joining me. Um, it's a beautiful Thursday evening, no matter what, what, what. If you're here, you got something going right. You're you're still breathing. You're still kicking. Uh, tonight, I have joining me uh, Mr. Drew Tingley. He is from Season 19 of Hell's Kitchen. You can find him on Instagram at chef underscore drew aaron a-a-r-o-n um without further ado i'm gonna bring my main man up here don you feeling blessed today oh yeah always too too blessed to stress and that's what they that's that, that's what they say about old don and then i'm gonna bring in uh chef drew right now howdy drew thank you for coming on Thanks for having me, guys. Happy to be here. It's great to have you. I guess uh, take this time and tell us a little bit about you. A little bit about me. Uh, I am an award-winning professional chef. I've been a professional chef now for nearly two decades. Uh, you may have actually seen me on season 19 of Hell's Kitchen that aired, I want to say, back in 2021. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be able to spend some time with some of the most incredible chefs that are out there right now. I mean, I got a chance to um, meet Gordon Ramsay, get yelled at by Gordon Ramsay. If you haven't seen the season, I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but it is definitely an awesome one, season 19. Uh, yeah, but outside of that, uh, as of right now, I am just working on my first cookbook that I will be launching this year, um, some content for my page. Uh, working on some fun recipes that really help a lot of people at home bring a the style of restaurant to their kitchen. I know a lot of people can't really afford getting out there and eating all the time. So this gives people an ability to have restaurant quality food inside their homes. So that's just some of the unique things that I am working on currently. Sure. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Uh, you said that you were award winning. What did you uh, what awards have you won? <laughs> So back, actually, I'm from the capital of Pennsylvania, which is Harrisburg. So back in there, we have a bunch of different awards for best new restaurant, best chef in restaurants. Uh, there were super awards. So we actually took second place where I was the sous chef for the best new restaurant in Harrisburg at a place called La Piazza, or the Piazza of Lingolstown. It's an Italian restaurant. Absolutely fantastic food. I've uh, won four different award uh, wing competitions, some really big ones down there with 160 plus restaurants, some of the biggest names that are actually out there in the game for Har Harrisburg wing restaurants. I mean, we're talking places that are selling upwards of three to 400 cases of wings a week. So like these places aren't in some slots. We're talking t literal tons of wings a week. And to be able to walk in there and compete with all these amazing established places. I mean, these places have been around since before I was born. And just to be able to walk in there and compete against these other restaurateurs and not only be compete, but place that was, was absolutely and utterly incredible. Probably one of the best, thing, one of the most uh, incredible things I think I've ever done was probably those wing competitions. I know they sound sick because it's just wings, but like, honestly, you should always, you should put everything into everything that you do all in, no matter if it's just a simple sandwich or upscales like duck confit. Hmm. Yeah, um, I, I used to smoke meats competitively. Um, so I don't know if they have them up here. I've never seen them up here. Do you know what Gordon Food Service is? I'm very familiar with Gordon's, actually. Okay, so uh, down in Louisville, they had, like, competitions where you could go, basically, it would be, like, somewhere between five and ten competitors, and you would, um, yeah, smoke meats competitively, and the winner gets, um, you know, somewhere between a 500 and 1500 dollar gift card and there's uh four different categories which was um brisket pulled pork chicken and ribs um <clears throat> ribs you got disqualified if the if they fell off the bone whatsoever so Over you have to be able to like tension them a little bit yeah like if you did it too much uh, i won that two years with uh cherry ribs um, and then I got second and third with my chicken. 
Um, and I got fourth with. I have. I have them written down somewhere. This has been a while, but um, I won twice overall because it's like um, what is that? That way of scoring is called something. So like if, um, say we do three different categories and I get a two, a two, and a two, and then someone else gets a one, um, a three, and a four point thing, they would come in behind me. Do you, you go uh, like? So, so it goes. It goes to go on average. Yeah, so, um, yeah, yeah, we get it. So, like, if if we do three competitions and, or three different um, variations or whatever, so uh, let's say first place is worth three points, second place is worth two, third place is worth one, and then I get, like, first place in one thing and then second place, second place, that's seven points. Gotcha. Sorry, I explained that kind of weird, but you got you got. No, now, now, actually, now I understand. That actually makes a little more sense. Yeah. Um, okay. So, what made you decide to get into cooking? Oh, it's funny. I've um, always loved cooking. Food has been my passion since I was a child. Um, <clears throat> my uncle was a chef. My family has always been really big on food. Um, mm -hmm. Any family event that we've had, we've always been loaded down with hors d'oeuvres as far as the eye can see and then meals consist of just a, I mean hours upon hours of just food and never ending food and conversation and I always I always loved how much it brought together the family and people food being shared stories being shared it was always good times good feelings so I wanted to follow that I wanted to continue with bringing people together with food um i also looked at it as more of an art you know artists paint with a paintbrush musicians make music i think chefs uh tell a different story they just tell it with their food and i think that it's unique in a way they can express themselves and for me that's just a way that i found to express myself i think that food is love i think food is passion i think that anybody who wants to take the ability to learn how to cook food cook it well and actually do its due diligence and do it justice they're good people and you know i mean honestly it's also something that every, it's a skill that everybody needs to know i mean if you don't eat you um you die so it's like super important too i feel like there's a lot more science involved in cooking than people would care to admit um, people want to pretend that it's very simple and for some people um i guess they have kind of a knack for it but like some people just can't and they just can't follow those directions. They just don't know how to, I had, uh, I've had so many people just burn rice that I'm like, how, how do you do this? But then to someone that burns rice, they're like, how do you not? So I, I've, I've cooked basically my whole life. Uh, it's very, very common. Um, if you grow up on a farm, you have to know how to cook. There's no delivery. Yeah. There's nothing. No, nobody's coming to save nope. you. You better learn how to. <laughs> you better learn how to make salsa. You know. Um, right. So, you're coming out with this this cookbook, and, and the idea is essentially. You, you want to bring kind of complex like food ideas uh, to people who wouldn't normally have them. How to do a lot with a little. Is that kind of the, the vibe? Of well, so I guess really what the big vibe here is I want to bring restaurant flair into your home. That's the idea of the cookbook. The idea is there are so many dishes that you go out to a lot of restaurants and you're like, man, this is fantastic. How do I, how do I make this at home? And the thing yeah. is there are a lot of easy steps in that. I mean, in this cookbook, I'm going to cover a lot of the, like, recipes that I have had for long periods of time, how to make proper fried chicken. That's another big one, like restaurant quality fried chicken. That's something that I'm huge on. A lot of places you go to, I'm going to be honest with you, fried chicken sucks. It's either dry, it's under seasoned, it's over seasoned. You know, it's, <clears throat> it's not, it's just burnt. It's not good. The breading's not correct. There's just, there's a, there's an art and a, there's a science actually behind proper fried chicken. So just something as simple as that. Um, there's going to be some cool appetizer ideas, too. I think a lot of the things that I like to do, we love entertaining guests. So when we have people over for, like, 
sporting events and just regular just having friends over just for fun love putting out finger foods and stuff like that so there's going to be some dishes that you would find on a restaurant menu that you can make at home and you'll see yourself like hey this isn't as complicated as i think a lot of it is going to really dive into technique from the first book i want to learn a lot of basics a lot of just ins and outs that you can see that are interchangeable and then from there there's actually going to be it's going to be the start of a series so it's going to continue upon that path we're probably looking at about three or four when it's all said and done but really this is just a way to teach people how to cook like a professional chef hmm. yeah, um, unfortunately they're going to find out that some of these tips are actually pretty simple so we're just kind of really showing our ass at this point and making it, yeah. well, making like, it you know, they have to learn how to cuss if you can't cuss you can never cook like a professional that's right yeah. absolutely if you don't cut yourself and you don't at least drop yeah. one f-bomb yeah. like come on yeah. are you even cooking so back <laughs> to what you were saying about like fried chicken so i'm from kentucky all right and Ooh, every so time people hear that i'm from kentucky they go oh How's the colonel K kfc and i'm like that's not we don't even like that there that is that is an affront to fried chicken if you want good <laughs> fried chicken even go to Okay, Claudia Sanders. Claudia Sanders was the colonel's wife. Go to her restaurant. So he has that whole 13 spices, the, the secret, super, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. Her restaurant is, that's the chicken that they ate at home. Right. Like that's, that's what they ate. That's not the commercial. That, that's item. not the one that he, just not the one he, yeah. Right. I'm actually very familiar with this story. So... Actually, my uh, my aunt and my mom used to be babysat by Colonel Sanders' uh, wife, uh, Claudia. Oh, that's crazy. Um, there's like pictures of them together. I don't I don't know where they're. Oh, at. that's crazy. Um, but no, like fried chicken is so different than like I think the worst fried chicken I've ever had, and I'm sorry to uh, anyone who this offends. Uh -oh. Any hot take. Any any Chinese restaurant, I'm sorry, but it's like the bare minimum, usually. Almost always, it is like, if you had to guess how to fry chicken without anybody teaching you how to fry chicken, it would turn out like, like Japanese fried chicken, usually. And I get it. Like, it's probably the same vibe as like me making... <clears throat> I teriyaki chicken, like I, it wouldn't be good. Do either of you guys have any pizza ranches around you? Pizza? Not have pizza ranch. Oh, I was, I was pizza gonna, ranch. If, you, if you did, I was gonna see what you thought about their fried chicken because for a pizza buffet, it's very good fried chicken. We don't. I think we don't, the fried chicken places around we have around here aren't very good. You got like back home in Harrisburg, there are definitely a couple of spots. I mean, they're dodgy, real sketchy. Probably not somewhere you want to be real late at night. But I tell you what, some of the best fried chicken you get. I think. See, I need to go. Like, if you're in Louisville and you want to go someplace with good chicken, they need to have bulletproof glass. That's that's, that's what I hear. There should be. You should be concerned. For your well-being, um, exactly. Joella's has really good chicken. Um, Joella's and Royals—that's the two best. What? What? Um, Joella's and Royals has the best fried chicken um, by far. Um, all right back to not that um so <laughs> joella's and royals has the best fried chicken and the, the i think the only pizza buffet is that what you were just talking about don yeah it's a pizza and chicken buffet pizza and chicken. how can you go wrong with pizza and chicken i feel like I feel like every time I've ever been anywhere that has both of those things. It was my first restaurant job. 
every every time I've ever been somewhere that has both of those things, it's um neither <laughs> it's never both are good. No, the pizza's not good. Yeah, see, it's it's, <laughs> it's gonna it's either like what is that uh, crunches crunches chicken? Do you know what I'm talking about? The like gas station chicken. Hold on. I think it's called like Crunchies or cr God, it's like a. I'm trying to think of the brand. Uh, we have a Casey's around here that makes chicken. I've never heard of this Crunchy. Crispy, 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 crispy Crunchy Chicken. Crispy Crunchy. In the oh, south, it sounds terrible. In the literally south, sounds have This. Hold on. Uh, well, in the south, you can go to literally yes. any any gas station. They've got this the right here. This. Chicken. Yeah, I was just going to say, I see Facebook posts all the time of Southerners saying that uh, the best fried chicken is at gas stations. Uh, listen, I've gone down south. I've been all over the south. I will contest to that. You will find some good fried chicken. We got a, I just brought up Casey's before. They got good chicken. That's a gas station. Mm. I don't know how they do it at a gas station, but they do. So there is there's something called Lee's. I don't know if you all have ever heard of this. He's chicken. And shout out to Lee's for having the best, the best sweet tea that you can get on the go in the game. Period. Up here, they don't even really have like sweet tea. If I order sweet tea here, they'll just bring me tea and sugar packets. That's kind of the that's that's no, if I sweet tea, I, my foot needs to fall off when I drink it. That's right. I need to be concerned. My blood pressure exactly. needs to rise. Yep, exactly. This is it. Lee's uh, Famous Recipe Chicken. This place is really, really good. And they, so everything here is, it's fried to order. Um, so <clears throat> as you order it, don't try to eat it out the bucket. Because if you try, it's literally, like they, take it out of the fryer to put it in the bucket and then hand you that bucket. So you're just like, I'm like no, I don't even care. I, listen, you, my wife will contest this. So my kids, it, it, if it comes out of the oven, I will eat it. I don't care. I don't normally have time. And as a yeah. chef, I taste food. That's so ungodly hot as is. It doesn't even phase me anymore. I'm like, dude, I will drag in breath. I will the entire time. I don't care. You know, one thing I miss about working at a restaurant is uh my fingers aren't made of asbestos anymore uh, and i can't do what you just said anymore i i used to do the same thing i you know grabbing stuff like grabbing stuff right off the steam table with my fingers if i did that now i'd be screaming like a little girl have you ever <laughs> had one of these things before oh this is those raisin biscuits no these are bow berries they're called Bowberries. Or, um, Bojangles. Okay. Bojangles. I've had some. These, they're, they're blueberry biscuits with icing on top. I mean, it's not um, it's not a beef Wellington. It doesn't take any like extra effort. It's kind of the, the funnel cake or the or the yeah funnel cake of the biscuit world. I guess like it's it's good. It's not healthy for you at all. But I guess most things. Um, Everything if if it's. If it's not, if it doesn't try and kill you actively, then it's probably not good. Yeah. All the things that are good in life will kill you. That's what makes them good. The entire time I was in Louisiana, because I lived in Louisiana for two years, and I ate, I probably ate beignets. I was going to say, please tell me you got to the French Quarter and got beignets. Oh, so um, there's places in in new orleans that you would go for the experience and then there's places that you would go for not so much the experience but more like the um the food itself like so right. cafe du Mon, that's that's like that's the beignet place that's where you go for like but that's literally that's the staple yeah. in louisiana yeah i'm familiar it's where you would go for the to take photos of it and like people would know where you're at but there's another place called Morning Call. Morning Call is owned by the same company, and it's not yeah. near as popular. But like, 
so Cafe Dumont, they do like batch frying. So basically, because there's so many people there. And if you ever right. go there, there's going to be, got, you're going to be in line for forever. Or you can uh, drive 10 minutes that way and get better beignets. But I get it. I get I get why people would go there. It's a staple. I, I'm not. Exactly. It's the name. But um, yeah. Um, Morning Call is my favorite. It's in uh, it's in Metairie. If you ever go down there, uh, you hear this podcast before you go down to New Orleans for whatever reason. Morning Call in Metairie. That's where I would go, or morning call in Covington. About the same distance. Um, oh. Make sure you tell them Andrew sent you. Yeah, tell them I sent you. They'll be like, oh, all right, Dan Shell. That's all they're going to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is your favorite uh, your favorite breakfast to cook for yourself? Oh, my, my favorite breakfast? Oh, see, that's the thing. It's that all depends on the day. So I'm a big bagel fan. I love bagels. Like I love bagels, especially everything bagels with cream cheese. But if I'm feeling like really into it, I am definitely a meat, potatoes, eggs kind of guy. Um, mm-hmm. Love making omelets in the morning. The more cheese, the better. Um, bacon, sausage, fried onions, tomatoes, peppers, all that good stuff. Like I love big, thick, loaded omelets. Um. My favorite, honestly, if I had to like pick, pick my favorite of all time would probably be my take on what is to me like the best breakfast sandwich out there, which would be the sausage, egg, and cheese McMuffin. I love making them at home, just making those little circular eggs in the disc, cracking the yolk, letting mm-hmm. that yolk just get all nice throughout the entire egg, a nice salty sausage patty, creamy American cheese, and then just a toasted buttered English muffin. Something about that combination. It's like that salty, savory, crispy. Oh, it's just like it's rich, it's decadent, it's creamy and cheesy. It's You're just sticking to my I, soul, I put, man. I put, I listen, I put some sriracha on that because you gotta have some spice there too. It's like the perfect balance. But don't get me wrong, I also like a sweeter side. I do enjoy oatmeal. Like I do like oatmeal. People probably don't know that about me, but I love oatmeal. Love it. Load it up with walnuts, apples, brown sugar. Any t- any type of like fresh fruit going on top of it. Um, I actually used to work at a restaurant in Harrisburg, and this guy Miguel, this Egyptian guy, used to make the best oatmeal in the morning. So he'd be like, "Do you want a bowl of oatmeal?" I'm like, "Yeah, I want a bowl of oatmeal." Are you crazy? Like, yeah, let's get, let's get this, man. He would just the combinations he would throw together. Every morning, I'm like, "Miguel, you crazy man! This is fantastic." Um, I oh, honestly right. somewhere between there. Yeah. Calm down. All right. So, Wawa, first of all, just because I feel like no one outside of New Jersey, maybe maybe New Jersey, Pennsylvania, knows what Wawa is. Oh, uh, no. What the, are, are we doing this? Are you going to ask me the quintessential Pennsylvania question? No. Go ahead and ask it. No, no I'm not. I'm not going to ask you what you think. <laughs> I thought you were going to ask if it's Wawa or Sheets. No, uh, I thought you were going to. I thought you were going to do the pork roll thing. That's what I thought you were going to. No, uh, pork roll. <laughs> yeah. Listen, bro, it's, pork, it's a Jersey thing. It's a Jersey thing. There, so you got it about like pork roll or if it's Taylor ham, and I'm like, it's gross. <laughs> it's it's spam. It's <laughs> stop it. Is, it is. It is just a giant piece of spam. That's all it is. And they'll tell you, no, it's pork roll. Bro, that's just a fancy way of saying spam. It contains yeah. all the ingredients of spam, except yeah. it's not in the it's not in the co- it's not in the can. It's just shaped it's in a it. circle. Yeah. <laughs> my uh, so my favorite breakfast to cook for myself is probably um if I have like ham, um a ham chop or ham steak. Um, I really like making, I'll take an English muffin, cut it in half, uh, basically sear it pretty on, like on my cast iron, pretty hot. I'll take my ham steak, uh, scrambled eggs, and then normally cheese on that. That's 
basically the perfect sandwich. And then on the side, I like cream of wheat or cream of rice. And maybe it grits if I'm feeling <laughs> here is like hard to do because the grits that they sell in most gas stations is a gas station in most grocery stores rather is it, it it's crap like back home that someone would throw tobacco juice on you for bringing something like that that's you ain't got a man in your family with the kind of grits you're bringing to this household yeah <laughs> they should, Oof. Yeah, no, um, you got you got to come correct with the grits. You got to come correct with the grits. Yeah, no self-respecting person eats instant grits. And if you ever had oh. instant grits, and then you think you have an opinion about grits, you don't have mm. an opinion about grits. But why make instant grits? It's it's it just make it. It doesn't take much to cook grits. It's actually very simple, and it's really and it's delicious too. Like grits probably take no long, no more than like 10, 15 minutes if you're going to do it correctly. And it's not complicated. You know, make sure you have your good, uh, nice, rich stock in there. Make sure you have the butter, your milk or your butter, your milk or your cream. Throw in some butter, cheese at the end so it doesn't get overcooked and, and like wallpaper paste. Mm -hmm. Grits yeah. are one of the most simplistic things to make. I, I Listen, I'm from the north, but I have a southern soul. So like, mm, grits speak hey guys, to my guess what? You I've never had grits. Uh, well, now you're from Wisconsin, though. I don't know, like you're from Wisconsin. I don't think that you guys you have corn. I don't know why. Yeah, you would. I was gonna say you would think that you guys would have uh, grits because grits are just ungodly unhealthy, and Wisconsin doesn't do anything healthy. <laughs> oh, not fried, really. Fried stuff with cheese. I think we're. I think we're too obsessed with the fried cheese curds. And the fish fries. Yeah. What's a fried cheese? Oh, oh wait, no, that's like um like you take a cheese curd, you batter it, and you deep fry it. And you fry it. It's like and then you small... dip it in ranch. Yeah, it's just gonna say that you just dip it in a godly large amount of ranch. Because in Wisconsin, everything gets served with ranch. Why not marinara? Because it's Wisconsin and fucking because it's ranch. Wisconsin. No, you you eat jalapeno poppers with marinara. <laughs> You eat cheese curds with ranch. <laughs> what does that mean? Is that where ranch is made? Is that where they no, I, it was, I think, honestly, it might be. I don't know yet. That, but There's just something know, about Wisconsin and ranch. Dude, when I was, I swear, I went to Wisconsin uh, like years back and it was literally everywhere. Like, I know it's a popular condiment, but like every single place I went to, just with ranch, ranch. Like, bro, oh, like, dude, I don't, ranch, I don't ranch as a as a kid in Wisconsin, you're probably more likely to eat ranch than ketchup. Oh yeah, you know, ketchup is a super yeah. popular condiment for kids, but I bet you in Wisconsin, more kids are going for ranch than ketchup. Look, I, I believe, love. I believe that a thousand percent. Hidden Valley. I always have like a half gallon in the fridge. I like ranch, but I'm a ranch bitch. What I'm saying right now, it's just, it's deeply. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm getting at. You're not allowed here. Oh, um, I got. When when is your uh, book supposed to come out? We're gonna be uh, shooting for this fall. Okay. Shooting for sometime um, around this fall, right before, right before, right before Christmas is really gonna be the end, uh, ultimate goal. Probably November. So we're shooting for here. Okay. Probably <laughs> try and get it out before Black Friday. So um, it, it's going to be paper or virtual or. Well, so here is how I'm gonna go about this. Because I have an idea, and I'm still listen, trying to play around with it. I have to tell oh, go ahead, you. Go ahead. Virtual recipes make me want to put my phone through the wall and why it is it's like i'm just trying to figure out let's say it's let's say it's devil eggs and i'm like ah did i used to put this in it or whatever and i i go to look up a recipe this lady whoever it is and it does not matter who it is they have to write a story about how their husband's mom hates deviled eggs, but will eat these deviled eggs. And she only started making them three years ago in the fall when her 
cousin-in-law told her that she had to sprinkle a bit of sweet relish on it, and that's what makes them good. Like, I don't want to hear your backstory if you think they're Could good. Could you just said add the sweet relish? <laughs> just yeah, just say they're good. Just that's it. That's all you have to do. I don't. That's need- why everybody likes Chef John from Food Wishes. Straight to the point. <clears throat> I just call my grandma. I honestly like if I don't if I for whatever reason don't have a recipe or don't know a recipe, I will just call my grandma. I'll call her and she'll be like, ah, uh, this. And she like she remembers all these recipes. She has a crazy good memory. Um, I actually called her like two weeks ago because I started baking bread. And she like she was like, actually, and this is because if you've never made bread, you have to put ingredients in a specific order. So yes, you do or you'll kill you'll kill the yeast. Yeah. If you don't do it like that and you don't have like it, it it's that's that's a science. That's a, a pure yes, science. Like hundred percent. You have to know the order, you have to know the amount, and you have to know like what size loaf you're making. If you don't know those things, you are gonna make a turd. That that's just what it, it's gonna be lumpy or hard or <laughs> It's not going to rise enough, or it's going to rise too much, and then it's just going to burn. Like, there's a lot that goes into bread making. I, um, so I, I'm sorry, you were saying. Um, I was saying that. Um, I was thinking that a question. couple ideas here. Yeah. Um, I want to do. There's going to be definitely a hard, hardback printed copy of these books. I want them to uh, something to be tangible. I think it's really important. Um, you know. I think it's very important to have something like that. But also, I have a, a lot of interest that's been expressed from overseas. I have a lot of fans that are actually over in England, Ireland, Australia, New Zealand. And they're asking me about shipping. I'm looking into shipping prices, and it's not feasible. Uh, the, what I, I'd have to charge like $250 a book, and I just can't do that. So I'm thinking of offering something for people that can't get a physical copy, I want to be able to find a way to offer them an ability to purchase the book and have it themselves. Like it's a PDF file. You, now it's yours. It's downloaded. You can access this at any point in time. You open it up. It, it would just be like you're opening the cookbook, but it would be like opening it up on your computer screen. So there wouldn't be much difference in it at all. Uh, I'm actually working with a couple of developers right now that are trying to help me put that together so that, like I said, it reads like the cookbook. Because I want you, I want that feel. I want you to be thinking, oh, I'm turning the page. I'm actually seeing what's in here, what has to go this this way, that way. You know, not just I'm clicking a page, clicking a page, clicking a page. Mm-hmm. So like a uh, like a virtual checklist type thing. Like, is that, is yeah, that something like that. Okay. Something like that. I mean, like I like I said, I have these people that are working on it for me because I am not that technologically savvy. I am pretty well off, but. Some of these things are out of my wheelhouse, and that's what we hire people for. Um, I'll have to ask my wife about this, but she has this, like, she's part of something that, like, it makes all of her shipping cheaper. Um, I'll find out what it is, and I'll let you know. But, yeah, I think that virtual is not really, like, a bad way to go. And I think interactive would be kind of a, a cool way to do that. It's just... I personally hate it when I have to read a story before I get to the recipe. That's my main. Problem. Oh yeah. Because obviously, it's super convenient you won't have problem. that with me. If you, you'll know my story from me. You're not. That's not where you're buying. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not writing a book. Yeah. What's that? <laughs> so just write a novel, like a regular, like yeah. Sherlock Holmes in the front, and then mm-hmm. you're like, uh, next to the body, th- there was a book. But it was a cookbook, and this is what it said. And then you put the cookbook. In the- it's all. Oh. Yeah. So it's a, it's like Inception. It's like a Taco Bell inside a KFC. Right. Yeah. And on the very last page, you just write, like, it was the butler. It was the butler. But twist, there was no butler the entire time. You were the butler all along. <laughs> what if the real butler was? Oh, the yeah. You're the butler. <laughs> Police are on their way. Stay put. Yeah. <laughs> Call an ambulance, but not for me. <laughs> um, Ian asked, uh, but how many humans can a tree plant? I, I don't know what he meant by that, but 
Bye. Um, I guess he's not, he's like saying we, humans can plant trees, but trees can't plant humans. I think it would be very weird if trees planted humans. I think if we take could take anything from Lord of the Rings, it's that ants can be very violent creatures. I cannot imagine. So out back here, I have a uh, I have an oak tree that's about. I mean, it has to be seventy feet tall. Ooh, if it's a big boy. If that tree came to life, it would be horrifying. House so quick. I'm on the I'm on the the front lines fighting for your well being. You know, um, oh, wouldn't even stand a chance. Where is uh? The Whomping Willow. The Whomping Willow. A little Harry Potter reference for everybody there. It would definitely be a Whomping Willow. <clears throat> or would it be a Whispering Oak? Oaks are beautiful. I got a nice big oak. We don't. We're, we're in the middle of We have no trees where we're at. Like, there's a little bit, but, like, there's nothing. And it's horribly windy, so... When the wind starts blowing, our whole house almost falls over. It's good times. Have you ever had a muffaletta? Oh, I've had a muffaletta. Are you kidding me? It's a delicious sandwich. Yeah. I mean, if you, I mean, you're, you've been to New Orleans, so if you haven't had a muffaletta, I don't know what to tell you. You know what I wish that was everywhere, and it's not, and it should be, is this right here. Hold on. Let me get this bad boy pulled up. God, I hope this is not be disgusting. Uh, where is you may know what I, what this is. I hope you know what this is. You know, I'm not a very picky eater, but I'm not a big olive guy, so I've never tried a muffaletta. Do you know what this is? Have you ever seen this before? Is that is that Andouille sausage? No, that's uh, that's boudin. This is yeah, boudin. 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 Boudin is I've, so boudin. good. I want to try it so boudin. bad. I've seen it's people so making the sausage and instead of tasting it, just eating it out with a spoon. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I could definitely do that. Yeah. You can, I mean, you can literally, like, you can just pop the, it's like a natural casing hot dog. You can literally just pop the top and, like, eat it like a, like a, it, it, so what's in here is chicken. It's going to be smoked, smoked chicken, smoked pork, and rice. And don't uh, uh, don't forget the pork liver or pig liver. It's inside of that. Oh my god! Yeah, I thought there was I thought there was liver in it. Yeah, yeah, just smoked boudin has pig liver in it, buddy. Oh, Wasn't yeah. that on a? Didn't they make that on Mind of a Chef with that one guy? Yeah, but I'm pretty sure traditional boudin definitely has pork liver in it. The turkey, uh, bell pepper, celery, onion, cayenne. But you're right; it's definitely chicken and pork. But I'm like, I'm like 90% sure that there's liver in there. Yeah, pork liver. Yeah. Uh, traditionally, it's, it's what makes it good. It's so good. God, it's, it's so delicious. Good. It is. It's delicious. I mean, a lot of a lot of the food in New Orleans is absolutely delicious. Yeah, it's yeah, disgusting. Probably. That's the thing. It, it all came from like the French, and the French style of cooking is absolutely it's grotesque. Like people think Americans are unhealthy. You should read a French cookbook. What like, is that? Here, here's, here's the first part of the recipe: cook it in ten pounds of butter. Oh, that's, <laughs> what, I, I wanted to start this dish off with fourteen thousand calories. Um, what's that bladder sous vide? You know, you know what I'm talking about. I don't know how else to explain it. Uh, it's like inside of Big a bladder. bladder. So imagine sous vide, except for you're using like a bladder <clears throat> to do that. I think I've, I think I've seen videos of this. Well, like what that. You're talking that Irish dish, or is it a French thing? I think it's a French thing. Mm. Yeah, it's like a, they poach it inside of a bladder. It's definitely French. The French do a lot of weird stuff. What is that thing yeah, where they like, like uh, it's, they draw a bird in bourbon or something? And Bissy. It's that, 
Yeah, if it says I can't pronounce it, but it's like V E or U. I don't fucking remember. I did yeah. some. We did. We did study Escoffier and stuff like that in culinary school. So my instructor saw this. He'd probably be pissed right now. But <laughs> if you had to Orkland a... bunting, that's it. <laughs> if you had to make a recipe yeah. with under four items, what would it be? No, I'm sorry, four or less. There you go. Four or less. Okay. Are we are we including seasoning as part of this? Uh, no, no. So I can, so salt and pepper can just be like whatever. But the actual okay. So if I had to do four ingredients or less, so it's just like, <sighs> ooh, oh, that's tough. Well, I'd probably have to do a dish with chicken. Because chicken is so universal. Um, hmm. Definitely onions, garlic, because those are just a, such a staple of any type of cuisine. Cooking, I don't know. That's a tough one. But definitely a protein, onion and garlic would have to be in there because, I mean, there's just such powerful flavors. I mean, onion, cook it down, releases sweetness, sugars that you want. Garlic, very pungent, very powerful. Yeah, for that little a little spice to it um probably those two and then some form of acid whether it be a vinegar whether it be lemon juice but something there and then i guess i'm trying to think yeah i think i think that's it i just just right there just something that you can have a balance there i mean what was know, the first thing you said after chicken a protein would be onion garlic and then some type of acid oh yeah gar garlic was what you said yeah Gotta have garlic. There's literally every garlic goes in everything. I would have a hard time though deciding between caramelized onions and some kind of pepper, like a green or red pepper or something. Yeah, but the ingredients that it would take to car uh, like caramelize the onions, you're, I mean, if you only have four to cook with. Oh yeah, I suppose. If, oh yeah. Oh, yeah, you can, yeah, you can caramel, you can like caramelize garlic. onions. You can, just, you can just put onions in a pan and caramelize them that way. I mean, all you yeah. cook super, super, super low and slow, they'll release all their natural With sugars. Your own juices and sugars out. Yeah, but if you're doing yeah, it, then all of a sudden you got it's gonna take. It takes a while. I rarely a while. olive oil is so expensive. I rarely ever use oil or butter anyway. You're in Wisconsin. Butter shouldn't be expensive. You guys have cows. You have more cows per. per I would just make you have more cows than people. Just make butter there. I don't know. Yeah, I know. Like, and not only that, but I'm, I'm sure. Like, I I'm found out how to make it with an immersion blender, and I want to start with that. But I've only ever made it in like a, like a jug, like a, like a big cup. <laughs> That's the only way. I've ever so made it. this is gonna sound hilarious, but place that I used to work at, we used to make our own butter. And when I tell you this was the most ghetto thing I've ever seen in my entire life, they bought three paint shakers, okay? And they had these special containers that just fit in the paint shaker for the cream, and you stuck it in there, and it just shook it. I swear and to God. And then used, like, an old paint can? Yeah. Yeah, dude, when I walked in, the first time I saw it, I was like, what's that? And they're like, oh, that's how we make the butter. And I'm like, that's paint shaker. Yeah, same thing. Like I, I mean, yeah, I guess it is true. <laughs> like all you have to do is just get this motion. So like, that's it, just yeah. Maybe fits, that's just a good way it, of repurposing. What is it? If it if it fits, it sits or something like that. If if a, if a fits us, that's right. It's I culinary think, ingenuity, right there, one hundred and one. If I had to make something in four ingredients or less, I would either make. Hold on, let me count these to make sure that I'm right. We're counting. I was going to say rose sauce is just cream, cream, tomato sauce, garlic. Say. Uh, hey, guys, can I step out for one second, please? I had, yeah. Sorry, I'm going to put you guys on hold. I apologize to everybody who's watching. I have um, children at home. I just have to step off for one second. Yeah, do your thing. No worries, bro. Yeah, so I would do like... Oh, no, wait. I think that's too many ingredients because... I think I'd do, like, a chicken, andouille sausage. 
Are we are we counting water if I have to boil rice? No. Okay, so chicken, andouille sausage, rice, and then just some kind of sauce, like a duck sauce, sweet and sour, or something like that. Oh uh, wait, if you have like pre-mixed stuff, is that does that count as? Oh, now we're getting into it. What are you talking? Like a bag of like uh, mixed veggies? No, I'm saying like um, let's because say... like is a bag of mixed veggies one ingredient or four? Like, what if I have like um, mixed veggies is one. Like like cake mix. Like cake the, mix. The, oh, the, you know what I mean. That's like, cheating. Is, that's baking we'll soda count. and flour and yeah, that's cheer. what I'm saying. Like, I suppose we'll count that as one. Because Fine, it's, it if I had to do if I had to do dessert and for I don't know if you all have ever had it like this, but if you take like a yellow cake mix, um, with a sun kiss. Oh no no I'm sorry. You so you get two cans of peaches right? You're gonna you're gonna drain one. Ooh, one, I know one, what you're one, doing. Uh, you put that in the bottom. You're gonna put um, vanilla extract in it, and then you're gonna just dump like. Um, the the box of of cake mix on top, and then you're gonna take slats of butter and put it everywhere on top. on top. And it's the best. Don't mix it. You'll ever have. Yeah, yeah, no, don't mix mm-hmm. it. Put it in uh, nope. 350 for 20 minutes. Yeah, about 20 minutes. That you'll sounds never, incredible. You'll never have it. It is. Cobbler. It is. It, he's not wrong. It's literally outstanding. And yeah. I, I trust. I love cobbler, I, especially peach cobbler. That is one of my absolute favorite desserts all time. Top five, literally top tier dessert. Can't beat it. Southern peach cobbler, big old scoop of vanilla ice cream on top. Oh, there is oh, nothing oh, better. Oh. There is nothing better. No. The hell with apple pie and everything else. Peach cobbler. That is that is America. Alternatively, it takes a while to make it, but strawberry cobbler is so good. So strawberry so coffee is delicious. Yeah. Um anything strawberry. You hate strawberry? No, anything strawberry. I love strawberry. Are you kidding oh, me? Yeah. I have a giant jug of strawberry syrup in my fridge. Hmm. <laughs> I strawberry milk. I prefer strawberry milk over chocolate milk. Strawberry milk. I actually prefer banana milk, but it's mm-hmm. it, you can never ever get it anywhere. So <laughs> I can't drink banana milk. When I was in high school, I tried to do I tried to do the milk challenge and I drank a gallon and I got close. I got like about a cup and a half away. And it, nope. You can't put that much milk inside a human body in that short period of time. I could do it. I could do it right now. Do <laughs> it. I, I possibly could, but I know that I I actually what was it? Maybe like a month or so ago, I have one of my cooks. We have this really awesome creamery that we buy our milks from and our chocolate milk. We have a cookies and cream one. So there's half gallon there one day. And I was, he's like, let's drink it to the head. And I said, you know what? Screw it. Cracked it open and chugged it in like five, six seconds. He just stared at me. And I'm like, yep, let's go. So like, how do you feel? I was like, I think I'm going to throw up. I honestly feel disgusting. I feel very uncomfortable. I just drank a half. I just put 2,600 calories in my body in 10 seconds or less. I don't feel very good. <laughs> So before there is something called go mad and anybody who lifts and watches this, as soon as I said, go mad, they were like, Oh God, go mad. is a gallon of milk a day. It is yep. something that you do to gain mass to basically mm-hmm. it's the easiest way. You get 2,400 calories out of drinking a gallon of milk a day. Yep. You it's, yeah. In, that's 100, 120 grams of protein. Something like it's that. very, very calorie dense, very rich in protein. Yeah. It's, it's, it's one of the best ways to bulk. Also, uh, vitamins A and D act as like binding agents for like everything in your body. So, vitamin mm-hmm. D it allows you to receive any other vitamins better. So other vitamins, they become more effective. It's, um, I mean, it's really not the worst way you can do it. It's better than taking like the other route of just eating like dog shit, McDonald's, like 
double. Just you just have to give you a heart attack. But yeah, this is great. But then I'm gonna I'm gonna bulk up, but also the cholesterol in my heart's gonna kill me. I wish that I lived <clears throat> somewhere where I could get like raw milk. God, I I've lived. I could walk five seconds down the road and get your raw milk. We have farms everywhere. We're I'm blessed. I live in farm country. I, I, I used to live in a big city. I moved up here in the middle of nowhere, and I would never go back. Never. There's no part of me that ever wants to go back. Far, like city living, y'all can have it. Farm life for me, I like it. It's quiet. It's peaceful. You get like you said. You want raw milk? I can get any. I can go to any farm I want right down the road, and I can get whatever I want. And the quality is. Unbelievable. Do you live near any beef farms? Oh my oh my god, yeah. <laughs> Dude, there's there's a dairy there's a little bit of dairy for five milk. minutes. If you give me a couple of gallons of raw milk and like a side of beef, I'll I'll drive up there next weekend. I could yeah, just come up. I'm being dead serious about that. I'm they real hundred percent serious. My friends own a farm, crossroad farms. They raise that's what they do. Yeah, I'll hook you up with my friends from Crossroad Farms. Shout out to Holden and Allison over at Crossroad Farms. You guys are awesome. I will definitely hook you guys up. Um, the, uh, a funny story about them. My little si my sister's kids don't drink milk. And my wife had milk at her um, bridal shower party, whatever, but had their milk. These kids <clears throat> slugging this milk. They're in little glass bottles. They drank yeah. like three or four each. They're like, this is the, because it is. It's like you like fresh milk like that it's a different thing day different than the stuff you get in the grocery store yeah it's a it's a different it's a different experience it's incredible it's delicious like once like once you start eating this farm fresh food you can't go to the back to the grocery store all that stuff is loaded full of pesticides uh, chemicals color like food additives that aren't good for you like oh hey this is here's your processed sugar and red dye number 40 yeah and i can't understand why my kid can't sit still also, um, anybody listening to this, if you don't know a farm near you, look into Barn Two Door, like B A R N number mm -hmm. two door. Um, it should come up as like local farm finder or something like that. But usually, it'll give you a pretty good like way of finding like produce. Uh, a lot of times, you'll find like uh, there'll be like honeys or or soaps or like there'll be a bunch of different products. But it's just so that you don't have to go to the store and i think it's probably a lot better for our economy that you don't go way better there. buy from a farmer yeah <clears throat> if you can oh. if, yeah absolutely if you can um, now you got now you have me in the mood for like talking about beef and everything else like that and now i'm thinking about dinner for tomorrow night and i'm like i'm over here on the side like writing stuff down like hmm we haven't had beef in a while. Maybe we should do something with beef. I think do, tonight we made this thing. It, it's a super easy recipe for anybody who's uh, interested. It's a four ingredient casserole is what it's called. It's a ravioli casserole. Um, what you do is you just get a jar of whatever sauce you prefer. We get um, uh, Maria... Uh, Oh my gosh, why am I spacing on this? Um, why do I feel like we probably use the same pre made sauce? Because I feel like ours is named Maria too. Oh, Maria something. I, we get it from like Acme. Um, oh, what is it called? That's going to bug me. Yeah. Oh wait, I know how to find this. I'm about to walk out to my cupboard and grab a jar and see if it's the same. Well, I'll, I'm gonna pull it up. I think uh, not emerald. Nobody cares about emerald. Um, who's your least favorite celebrity chef? Jamie Oliver. Jamie Oliver. Jamie <laughs> Oliver. I don't even know who that is. Oh my God! Did you ever Good. see the video of him making chicken nuggets for those kids? That's my favorite story to tell people ever. I tell people if you don't know Jamie Oliver, go watch this video. It's the funniest video you ever see, especially watching oh, his God. 
get crushed at the end when they're all like, oh, yeah, his chicken soul is in. absolutely yeah. crushed. <laughs> That's sad. a good one. Wait, so what? It, like, he, he like he thought oh, for wait, sure that he made a point to those kids. It's the guy that's trying to prove that they're, they're like disgusting or whatever. Yeah, right? he's like, oh yeah, yeah. look at this. He, he showed them. Like, watch it. them. He watch them make. It. And then he all the kids all... are like, Woo-hoo! they were like thinking that it's all gross. And at the end of it, he's like, now nah, you saw that and you saw this. Who would rather have this? Who'd rather have a chicken nugget? And all the kids are like, chicken nuggets. And he's like, I was yeah, so what, I was what, so wrong. I was so wrong about the name of the spaghetti sauce we use. It is called Francesco Rinaldi. Francesco Rinaldi. That's what I use. Oh, yeah, I had that at once, I think. Get out of here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had that. Yeah, this, that, that, it's Maria. So, yeah, I don't know why I thought Francesco Maria. Francesco Rinaldi. That's um, so funny. I actually, I, I so, really feel like. That's so, funny. with this stuff, uh, just a super easy recipe for you all to, to use. It, um, Basically, what you're going to do is you're going to get like a 9 by 13 with glassware, um, spray down your pan. Um, or if you have nonstick that's good enough, then don't. I mean, it's probably still better that you spray it. You're going to take like a half cup of this sauce or whatever sauce you prefer. To, you know, it's up to you. You take like a half cup of the sauce, coat the bottom of the pan, and then you're going to do, um, you're going to do like, I use frozen ravioli. Honestly, um, frozen spinach ravioli. Um, take that, put it, you know, create a little grid at the bottom there, and then you're going to put um, spinach on top of that. And then I use um, mozzarella cheese. Uh, if you get one bag, it should be enough for the whole thing. You're just going to split the bag in half. It should be about four cups in a bag. Um, so yeah, you just sprinkle this on top and then just repeat, do two layers of that. So it's going to be sauce, spinach, or I'm sorry, sauce, ravioli, spinach, cheese. And then you're going to do sauce, ravioli, spinach, cheese. You just do it twice. And then layers. And then on top of that, you're just going to put like, uh, like grated, uh, Parmesan. So mozzarella. Parmesan, spinach, and frozen ravioli, and that can of this. So, you know. Oh uh, yeah. Super easy to make. It's like it's like a it's like a poor man's lasagna almost. Yeah, we call it. Uh, we actually call it ravioli lasagna. I don't know why. That's just what we call it. Well, it's that's basically what you're doing there. Sounds yeah. it sounds great. It is. It's it's super easy to make. Um, it's one of my favorite things, other than like rose. I I feel like I'm always saying this wrong. Rose sauce. But I think it's actually rosé sauce. It's rosé. Yeah. Um, rosé, baby. You got to be fancy. And also, when you're doing it, pinky up. Rosé. Rosé. It, it, is, it, <laughs> it is the best. In, in my opinion, rosé sauce is the best sauce. Oh, yeah. It's like it's vodka sauce. Vodka sauce is rosé sauce. It's absolutely delicious. Mm. I mean, that's why I just I think it's so funny how vodka sauce has like exploded on the scene because of uh, bloggers like Devour Power and stuff like that. They're showing all like these New York places and Jersey places that do like chicken cutlet sandwiches and vodka sauce, and everybody's like, "Oh, I can't believe this stuff's like crazy." It's like Devour Power is starting around. to get too much for me. I don't know. I used to love that channel, and I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but. Every time one of their videos is recommended these days, I just I get like ten seconds into it, and I'm just like, ah. It's like, how can I make this? Like, here we we got we went to this place that literally injects bacon fat directly into your heart. Yeah, it's so much yeah, stuff it's where it's just like, I just want to see some good food, not all this gimmicky food. They serve it with a syringe of adrenaline, so that when your heart <laughs> yeah. stops, it's all fictionless. Yeah, they they might as well. That's probably their next video, actually. I what think so, and I think we Wait, should get credit for it because it was here first. Devour what? power? What is it? Devour power? Devour power? Yeah, I've I've never even heard of this. Oh, I I like. I mean, I like them. I I've been following. It's them like a since. husband and wife team. Eat their way through New York and Jersey. 
They go to like the most ridiculous places. So, like, I'm not gonna lie. Hold on. They did turn me on to a sandwich her? spot. Is this her right here? Um, yeah, that's yep. um, yeah. She looks incredibly annoying. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Like. Yeah. I wanna, I wanna. They they there's a sandwich spot in it's either Jersey or New York, but they do this chicken cutlet sandwich with mozzarella sticks, waffle fries, American cheese, chicken cutlet, and vodka sauce. And honestly, it sounds like the most incredible say I just want to go eat it. Like hmm. I love French fries and mozzarella sticks on a sandwich. Um, Are you hungry? From East Brunswick, New Jersey, really brought that whole thing home. Like they're the ones that kind of originated the fat sandwich style. So like, I remember growing up going to are you hungry and getting like what was called the fat bitch which is um a cheesesteak on oh. yeah cheesesteak onions mozzarella or, i'm sorry american cheese mozzarella sticks chicken fingers and french fries i'm sorry it's so I, good I got that a, sounds like a fat bitch i got this it is by like how many pepperonis there are so that's actually uh T mm -hmm. tony baloney's in hoboken new, uh, new jersey they went viral for their taco pizza that you've probably seen the giant pizza made of like real deal tacos with guacamole and stuff that's their swine fighter pizza dude the um, ranch is crazy yeah so they take the pepperoni fat from the pepperoni and drizzle it into the ranch and then drizzle the ranch over top that's like it's literally like five pounds of pepperoni just cooked up crispy and put on top of pizza. I love but the pepperoni. way they do their pepperoni right. is how I do mine when I make homemade pizza. That's I fry my pepperoni it. separately Got so it. it gets super crispy. And then when the pizza's done, I put it on because I want that pepperoni crispy as can be. Oh, yeah. Let it pull, cup up so you can get all the grease. Yeah. Here yeah. for a good time, not a long time. Oh, yeah. I've been here for a long time. <laughs> and then you got to put that Mike's hot honey on for sure. Oh, the hot honey? Hot honey is where it's at. I, I finally it. got a bottle of that. I didn't have any of that until a couple months ago. In all fairness, I only dislike one, no, two food items, really. And that would be, I don't really like pepperoni. I think it's unimpressive. I, I don't like it. I don't like the I don't like the taste of it. And um, wow. hominy is very very rarely will I eat hominy. I don't even think most people know what hominy is. Hominy. Is no, you probably people on here are probably like, what's hominy? Harmony? Yep, harmony. I've never had it. Yeah, most people probably have it. Um, it's kind of um, it's corn, but it's like soft corn. I guess is the best way I could explain it. Like they treat it with to, something, to like soften it up and like make it like you have to eat it. Like if it's cooked in fat, it's good, and if it's not cooked in fat, it is garbage. Terrible, terrible. Yeah, it it sucks so bad. Um. I think that's probably it, though. I think that's probably the. Only yeah, this sounds thing. awful. Yeah, no. If it's not to fun. make hominy field corn, is dried and then treated by soaking it in lime. I just I, yep. So conditionally, I will eat pepperoni, and conditionally, I will eat hominy, but under no circumstance, <clears throat> I like blue cheese. Oh come on! I think it's garbage. I hate it. I don't. I don't care for it. It tastes, it's too strong. I think one of the greatest flavor combinations in the world is buffalo sauce and blue cheese dressing. If you do it right, I promise you you'll like it. Because I'm the same way I didn't like blue cheese until I had good blue cheese. And I'm like, this is literally outstanding. I hate blue cheese. I hate scripts. Pungent, too strong. Then I started having it in stuff in certain ways. And I'm like, you know what? I like blue cheese. I just don't like a lot of blue cheese. All of these burgers, like everything on this page, like everything that this brought up looks absolutely disgusting. It like, it's all like. Well, their whole channel is very gimmicky meals. 
It's all it's all very Americanized. Like, let me dip this in sauce and drip it all over everything. It isn't this look great? Cheese it's just and bacon epic. and cheese and bacon. Yeah, that's exactly. It. Epic meal time: cheese and bacon. Jack Daniels. Yeah, Jack Daniels. I was like, I was looking at at, at this this lasagna. Like now that listen. So no, I'm that that lasagna is incredible. Yeah, Watch so that, that video; it's incredible. That is legit. That's the really only nice. thing. The only oh. thing they don't have gone for them is that they don't fry it. They should slice it and then fry it in a skillet. I want that crisp. We used to. This is going to sound disgusting, but this place I used to work at. It was an Italian restaurant, and sports bar. We used to batter ours and deep fry it. Ooh, I don't know about the battering, but I promise you, it was like a giant. It was. I it feel was, like frying is one of those things that almost was it like a standard beer good. batter. Yeah, pretty much. You had to like it was technical to do, and you had to drop it off the like the stick as it went in, so it didn't catch the basket. But it was actually really good. Huh. It wasn't. Huh. I mean, I mean, so unhealthy. Yeah, sure. looking back on it, it's probably why the restaurant closed. None of the food was super <laughs> really not healthy at all. Um, what is it? Oh. Um. Yeah. No. Um. I think frying normally makes like a lot of stuff better. Uh, fried Oreos, Absolutely. fried Twinkies, fried mm. Oreos are so good. Fried Oreos are like it, it turns them into cake. Yeah, and like it's just just fr- yeah. Listen, I w- one time when we were slow at the restaurant that I worked at, I sent one of the cooks to the <laughs> store and I was like, I want you to buy a pile of candy bars. I want you to get packs of Oreos. I want Nutter Butters. I want I want Tasty Cakes. I want it all. Go get everything. What are we doing? I was like, we're frying stuff. We sat there for like hours, like a carnival, just back there, just deep frying, deep frying, deep frying. I didn't even know half the stuff you could deep fry. Oh, cheese, cheesecake, let's deep fry it. Oh, dude, I thought of this one time, but I did not ever do it. But uh, I want a deep fried carrot cake. Carrot. A deep fried what? Carrot cake. Why? Do you because not I because like... uh, I'm a huge fan of carrot cake, and I can't imagine deep frying it would make it worse. It probably wouldn't make it better either. But I also hate carrot cake. That's like that, That's my one. I I've oh, tried, come it, on, man. I've tried it. Dude, carrot cake is disgusting. I love I love carrot cake so much. Oh, oh it is so carrot bad. Carrot cake in the fridge. Oh, some cold carrot cake. Ooh. Oh, I don't want... I, I'll do zucchini bread and stuff like that, but carrot cake, it's dessert. It's not supposed to be healthy. I'm not... I'm what not a banana bread. You like banana bread, then? Hold oh, on. Man. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, when you eat... Drew, when you eat carrot cake, how does it taste to you? Mushy, cold, clumpy... I can feel the carrot in all of it. I can taste the carrot. It stands out. All I'm getting is cinnamony, carroty, gritty. It's a textured thing more than anything. It sounds it's so good. good. It's not okay. good. It's not good at all. I, it's funny because like growing up, my family loved it and would make it all the time and try and force me to eat it, and I would just sob as a child. Like, I hate this. I literally hate this. Please don't make me eat this. So ideally, it should taste... Close, not exact, but close to like a really rich pumpkin bread. Yes, and I don't like pumpkin bread either. What the? So as a as a chef yeah. though, has have you ever thought like there's a way I could make it to where I like it? I've tried, I've tried, and I have I have had master pastry chefs make it, and I'm like, it's literally terrible. It's it's a meat thing. It's hundred percent of me thing, and the thing I do try it every year. That's my thing. I will always try things I don't like once a year. It's like, oh, maybe I, maybe now I am over it and I like it. And like almost, almost always, it's like, nope, nope, still hate it, still disgusting. Can't do it. <laughs> I try but olives I like every thing. Christmas and still hate them. Well, you have to have olives in the right application. I used to also hate olives, but you just if you do it right, olives are freaking delicious. I've also never had like what people would say are good olives. It's always like the cheap cans. Good, 
Get some good or something like so that. I, That's what you just well, need to do. You need some with like cheese, like a good, yes, like yeah. a good mo- mozzarella in the middle, or like um, pimento is kind of a like that's the way that most people go, but it's like the worst thing to compliment olives, in my opinion. Um, like, I love so many different pickled things, but olives just come yeah. off they always come off as way too salty to me i think because uh, they are they're like 70 percent sodium yeah but it's weird because i love so many other pickled things like i could eat an entire giant jar of pickled beets you know i love pickled beets this is something that i love that almost nobody loves um i think this is <laughs> This most people hate fruit cake. That's oh, yet another I, thing I have never bro, tried. There's so many other good holiday desserts, and you pull this, throw it out, get rid of it, <laughs> no, send see, it back to the depths of hell where it came from. <laughs> this is what you do. How could you take something so no, festive no, no, and so, no. happy and so. so terrible? Andrew, Andrew's got a secret tip on how to enjoy it. The thing is, I've never bought one. I've never, I've never spent my money on owning a fruit cake. Just so we're pretty good. Sure. What if you deep fried it? I always, I always pan fry it. That's what I've always done. You cut a slice, kind of like, um, like a half. And inch. Then you eat it just on its own. Yeah. As a dessert? Yeah. Uh, basically, you just cut, you cut, like like I said, you cut like a little bitty, bitty slice of it, and then normally you like pan for, uh, you, you need unsalted butter. Uh, unsalted butter in this, and it's not, I mean, it's, I, I, I feel like I said that I said that I like it, and most people don't like it, right? That's that's how I describe this. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I mean, I, I don't. I feel like so many people hate this. <laughs> they hate it so oh, much. They do. It's, it's it's terrible. What what? Okay, I'm gonna read you the things that are in this. I right? will try I some fruit cake this year and let you know what I think. Me what's what's wrong with? Let's see, fruit cake. Standard recipe. I gotta read through somebody's fucking life story because I wanted to be funny in high school. No, <laughs> um, so this has pineapple out of here, pineapple, apricots. Dates, cherries, ginger, apple juice, unsalted butter, brown sugar, table of salt, cinnamon, allspice, nutmeg, baking powder. I mean, it all sounds it's, good. All purpose flour. No, it doesn't. Basically, it sounds like somebody didn't know what they were doing. They're like, ah, screw it. Let's go. No, that's 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 like that's uh let me rephrase. That's what I was getting at is like it all sounds good on its own. But then someone decided to throw it all together. I don't think it's yeah, we'll call it fruitcake. Yeah, yeah, that's that's why it's an insult, I think. Old fashioned Claxton fruitcake. Yeah, somebody that go works. to their Facebook and give them zero reviews. Well, zero stars. This company is one of these. One of these will last longer than a piece of copper. Like it is just, it's timeless. Like <clears throat> people have given this to like their grandmother, with like you know, stepped off the the boat in the early thirties in Ellis Island, and the government went, "Here's one of these," and she's been giving it. <laughs> To everyone in her family, and then getting it back the next year for the past eighty years. But if you cut that thing open, it'll taste like the day it was made. 
Yeah. No Clark, it's a gift that keeps on giving. These MFers age like erasers. Like <laughs> there is there is nothing you can do, no evil you can cast upon a fruitcake that, that it will ever recognize. It's like a Twinkie that'll survive a nuclear apocalypse. Yes. Cockroaches can't get killed by nukes. Fruitcake can't get killed by nukes. That's Cockroaches can get killed by fruitcake, though. Yes, everybody knows when they're doing rock, paper, scissors, paper, paper, do atom bomb, and cockroach, fruitcake kills all. Um, okay, so. Oh, sorry, what was it going to be? Um, so when. I guess when you release this, like the cookbook, when are you going to. Where, rather, are you going to release it first? Well, I will release it. Uh, the announcement will be made on my Facebook page. So it'll be released there. Then I will have a link set up where you can purchase it from. Uh, it'll be available on Amazon. It'll be available on a couple other platforms as well. I'm going to try and get physical copies into a couple of local grocery outlets down in the Harrisburg area. Just so, you know, we can have them on hand. Uh, but outside of that, primarily we're going to be dealing shipping through Amazon or dealing with Amazon and stuff like that. Uh, that's I feel like probably the, the best option is where to find it. Um, oh, excuse me. Holy crap! All right. Um, well, I don't want to take up too much more of your time. I got. Um, to wake up kind of early um so not me but kids i had to pace out because the kids got off school tomorrow because we're supposed to get a whole bunch of snow so we're just gearing up for the weather yeah uh it's not uh, sure i have to go out and shovel and start laying down South salt. jersey we don't really they they don't get they get like the idea of snow here so like it growing up in the ohio valley the snow that we got would it'd be snow it'd be eight inches ten inches here they get like a like a, food, a dusting a little a little you know a little salt yeah a little season right over top of it just god over south jersey like yeah just just enough to lightly cover up all the crack pipes and heroin needles true on the ground <laughs> i was i've been in jersey before i i'll never if it was in asbury park i believe I remember like walking oh, around like outside. Northern. I'm in like, I'm basically down here by the shore. That's where I'm at. Okay. Like the does south. It, does, it, does it make a difference in like, southern Jersey and northern Jersey? Is it like. Yeah. So when you cross yeah. that I 95 corridor, like anywhere south of Camden for the most part is where. Really <laughs> but Camden right. is a shithole. Um, I am very aware. Yeah. <laughs> Camden's a shithole. Trenton's a shithole. Newark is a shithole. Anywhere, like anywhere touching New York City sucks. God, it yes. sucks. But I also think New York it City sucks. sucks. So, you know. New York City's terrible. There's You you can go there just for the just to say you went there, but it's a terrible place. Nobody I mean, should live there. People that even live there aren't even happy. Oh, my God. They, they'll get like. They'll get an apartment the size of this room for like two thousand bucks and be stoked on nothing it. included. Nothing included. Yeah, exactly. They're so happy. Isn't this great? No, you live in poverty and you don't yeah. even you're not even smart enough to realize it. It's probably why you live in poverty. Yeah, I mean our our house is uh nineteen hundred square feet, something like that. And we, I, I honestly feel like it's not like it's not big enough because I just, it's an older house, so that it's nineteen hundred square feet doesn't, I guess, feel like nineteen hundred square feet if that makes right. sense. Yeah, um, it does. Those older houses can be like that. that yeah, make a lot of sense. Um, the walls are really different. Like the everything's shorter. I'm like six two, so when I walk into like the basement, I have to like. Dude, good. Yeah, you are tall. Yeah, like five nine. Five ten, if I'm wearing my chef shoes, and if you go by my license, six foot. 
Look, I'll tell you. Look. Yeah, I can't I can't do that. I'm short. I I have short people problems. That was the ceiling. So <laughs> that's I'm three inches away from the ceiling just doing that. <clears throat> Here. Good Lord. With a pin. I could <laughs> yeah. It, I can't. I I got like five feet. <laughs> no, but like I guess I guess I was just saying like I can't imagine living in like a 400, 500 square. I mean, what's the average? What's the average size of an average size? I got 973 here. Good Lord. Killing it. Oh, my God. The average studio apartment is in Manhattan is 431 square feet. That's Just basically enough room. that's my that's my kitchen and my living room. That's literally my living room. <laughs> that's nothing. 400 square feet. What is that? That's what is that? It's a prison cell. It's not much bigger than the room you're in. No. I mean, maybe like uh, maybe make that two and a half times. I would jump out of my window. I if I there. Oh my god! And the average rent for that four hundred thirty-one square feet for four hundred thirty-one square feet, the average rent is thirty-four hundred dollars. Oh, that's that's why you. That's why you see those people living in those illegal apartments in Chinatown yeah. for like a few hundred a month, where they have like nothing. I just said, like, they have a place to sleep. Why live in New York City? Because people it's, love the dream. For no, some reason, they've all been duped into the dream. No, that New York is this great no. place, and it's a fucking cesspool of just disease and. Like financial burden, and the the thing is, is like they don't realize that you can't be some. Like I know people from my class who moved out to New York, and every one of them that I know of has moved back. And I guarantee you, it's because they didn't realize you can't be some kid from Wisconsin. Oh, moving out to New York City when you're eighteen or nineteen years old, you gotta, you have to have money to live there. Yeah. yeah, it's not like the movies where you can just go out and everybody gets all hammered and it's like, oh, I just appear back in my apartment. Like, no, that stuff's expensive. <laughs> Those cab rides they get home are like five hundred dollars. Like, don't let them fool you. This isn't real. Yeah. None of this is real. Yeah, yeah and going out to the bar, <laughs> going out to the bar is nuts. God. Well, I have friends Did that are find on like one day. drink. I don't even go yeah. to the. I don't go to the bar normally, like in small right. towns. I can't. I would, why, why would I want to go and get in a bigger city that I don't know anybody and just be about a bunch of loud people that might might get stabbed? Yeah. I, I'm, uh, why? None of that why sounds would I, appealing. Why would I go anywhere where I might stab people? That's the big <laughs> yeah, It's even better. And prison's just terrible for your health. Yeah. If you want to eat ramen noodles... Oh, that would have been a that have been. A good thing. We'll have. I'm gonna have you back on, and we're gonna talk about like we're gonna look through like prison. All the, all the prison cooks. Oh yeah. Oh. Oh, but listen, guys, it's been real. It's been fun. Most of it's been real fun. I'm gonna have to jet set. I gotta go get my son around for bed and stuff like that as well. But I appreciate you having me on. Yeah. The, uh, it's been, it's been a lot of fun. I'd love to come back on here and chat and chop it up with you guys again. Thanks everybody who watched with us. Thank you for joining us. Appreciate that. Like I said, cookbook's going to be out this fall. Follow me on Instagram, Chef Drew underscore uh, Chef underscore Drew Aaron. If you haven't already followed me on Instagram, follow my Facebook page, Chef Drew Tingley. Um, outside of that, I appreciate you guys having me. Thanks for your time. Yeah, hey, man, it's been fun. I'm actually I'm really looking forward to your book. Well, thanks, guys. I will make sure I will make sure if you guys get a copy to autograph it for you and everything. 
Hell yeah, man. Uh, thank you, Drew, for coming on. Uh, we will be That's back good. next Thursday with uh, Carrie Means, the voice of Frylock. So tune in for that. Same time. Same I will time. be tuning in. Don will be heavily. with you as always. And you all have a, a blessed night. And I'll uh, I'll see you then.